All right, hey there, Be Well community. It's Emily and Eric here again today. Um, we're going to be running through a little demonstration of what brain spotting around pain or discomfort looks like. Um, for demonstration's sake, um, we are not going to be doing the um, adverse childhood experience questionnaire beforehand, um, but when you do work with a clinician, you could expect um, to be asked some questions before getting getting into it. So here we are. <laughs> um, I am all ready to go. Wonderful. So Emily, tell me a little bit about what you would like to work on today. Yeah, um, I want to focus on some pain that I've been having in um, my lower back. Um, I carry a lot of stress and anxiety kind of in my lower back, like psoas muscles, um, and in my pelvic floor. Um, so just with sitting, um, certainly feeling like coming into this election season, holiday season with a lot of tensing and bracing. Um, so yeah, that's showing up for me right now. Okay. Uh, can you tell me from zero to 10, tell me about your current physical discomfort that you experience where zero is comfort and 10 is extreme discomfort. Mm -hmm. I would say like a three, maybe a four. Okay. Uh, is there a time when you notice that it goes higher than a three? Yes. Um, my back pain gets a lot worse um, like after having a, a heavy day of work. Can you tell me how long have you been experiencing this for? Um, I think I've noticed um, a relationship with my like back pain and stress since, oh, probably since I was, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16. Mm. Okay. And I need to ask you, does this discomfort serves you in any way that you're aware of? No, it doesn't feel like it, no. <laughs> and uh, if you were to tell me in your own words, what does your body need? What would you say? Yeah, comfort, um, you know, the invitation to relax and let go. Okay. And would you be willing to welcome comfort into your body? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. That's great. So what I would like is um, we're going to think of a memory or I want you to think of a memory of a comfortable, uh, pleasant memory that your body felt good in a comfortable way when you were having fun or you were doing something outdoors or something that made you feel that you, your back and, and your body was feeling comfortable. You think about that, let me know. Yeah, I've got it. Okay, good. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pick and to choose one or the two pointers. Uh, I have two different colors. Some people like the one versus the other one, so you can choose. Mm. Um, well, my memory is with snorkeling, um, so I'm definitely pulled to the, the blue water uh, okay. Perfect. So I'm going to put that one away. And so what I would like is, I would like to do the x-axis point. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start for you to notice your body. How is your body feeling right now? Thinking about that comfortable experience. And we're gonna find the spot that corresponds to that. So notice the pointer right here. And notice what happens if I move the pointer to this side. Back to the center and to this other side. Yeah, I felt the most calm, relaxed feeling in the middle. In the middle? Okay, so I'm going to go back very slowly and tell me where to stop so you feel the comfort. Right there. Right there? Good. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to just notice your body and 
keep thinking of that memory. And notice what happens when I move the pointer slowly closer to you or further away from you. And tell me if your suds, your subjective units of distress increase or decrease. And notice what happens so quickly if I bring it closer to you. Or if I bring it further away from you. Yeah, I notice um, having the pain in my back subside as it's going away. Away, okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some sweeps away from you and just stay with your body sensations, noticing your body. And I'm going to leave you in silence and just keep noticing your body until you feel like you have arrived a, at a comfortable um, level. So just notice your body. Yeah, I can't. It just feels kind of weightless right there. Okay. Good. Just keep following it. Yeah, what's interesting to notice is each time the pointer is um, more up front after sweep, I do notice a, a kind of jolt and discomfort, but each time it's been it's been less and less, I can tell it's, it's okay. kind of quieting down. Okay, so just notice that and uh, be curious and see what happens. Yeah, I'm noticing the discomforts out of my lower back. It's a little tense in the middle of my back now. Okay, so just stay with that. Gone now. <laughs> One more time. Notice if there's anything.
Yeah, well, I'm really not sensing any discomfort in my back. Um, I'm noticing too a, a greater ease with being able to um, breathe deeply. Sometimes it's so tight back there, I can't like take a diaphragmatic breath. Mm. It feels very nice. <laughs> Great. Do me a favor. I want you to notice what happens if you move maybe to one side or to the other side in your body as you're sitting. Notice if anything happens. Yeah, I mean, I just feel it feels very open and relaxed. Okay, um, good. Feels good. Is your intuition that we have arrived? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Good. Excellent. Great. Yeah, I would rate it. I, it. I don't think I could give it a even a 0.5. You know, I feel very, very relaxed and comfortable. Okay. I'd say it's a zero. <laughs> Great. Hmm. Wow. Oh, thank you so much. I feel so much better. You know, I'm curious, what would this look like for folks who are experiencing pain in the upcoming weeks towards this holiday season? Yeah. So uh, the holidays bring a lot of information about the past. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, individuals associate the holidays with loss. Uh, at the same time, we get the message of this is the most wonderful time of the year, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, it creates a lot of conflict for a lot of individuals. And then you have uh, the perfect storm because it's uh, conflict times resistance divided by the experience of loss. You got the perfect scenario to now create what we call the experience of discomfort, experience of pain. And that's where they both can associate those two. And people are going to uh, feel more sensitive to these times. And so what I normally tell people at this time of the year is, one, get, get your appointment with your brain spotter right now. Um, line them up. Uh, second of all, make sure that you learn how to care for yourself as well and specifically learning this procedure on your own. I'll tell you how I do it on, my, on myself mm. uh, because that's the beauty of brain spotting that you could uh, utilize it on yourself as well. I highly recommend for people to engage with a brain spotter because the dual attunement is so important. But if you are uh, at home and you're experiencing discomfort and you, there's no way for reaching out to your brain spotter, by all means, uh, do this uh, on your own. Mm -hmm. So I was paddle boarding one day, and I, that's my, uh, uh, my exercise every morning. So I go to the lake, and in my past experience, when I was doing my internship at uh, Franciscan Children's Hospital in Boston, uh, on my way back to my apartment, I got hit from behind as I was turning mm -hmm. left. So ever since that day that I, when I got the whiplash, it left a sensation of discomfort that flares up for no reason at various times of the year. But it just so happened that it must have been an anniversary of some kind. So I'm paddle boarding and I get a flare up in the middle of the lake and my back at that moment, it got so stiff and so uh, uh, experienced with the pain, with the discomfort that I couldn't move at that moment. And I'm standing in the middle of the lake in this panel. Uh, and so I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness. So uh, here I am, I, I'm gonna have to uh, do what I know what to do. And at the same time, walk the walk, right? Because uh, I, I can do this at home but now I'm, the, I, I'm in the middle of the lake and I don't have the tools. I don't have my pointer with me, right? I don't have my pointer. So what did I do? I used my fingers at that moment. Mm -hmm. So I put my two fingers in front of me and as I'm, I'm, uh, I'm standing in, uh, right there, um, I found out that the easiest thing for me at that moment was to already know the beauty of the lake because I'm already there. 
And so I'm thinking, where else do I want to uh, know as comfort is being in the beauty of this lake. So as I'm looking at the beauty of this lake and just knowing what's it like to have an action here, which was paddling, I could just see myself paddling in, in my imagination without any discomfort. I started doing the same exercise that you and I just did, except that here I went very slowly. I found a spot that correspond to that comfort. And once I found it, I stare at it and I just began to move it away from me very slowly, very slowly. And I realized that as I was staring at very slowly, I could feel my back coming back to comfort again. And so it was, it was, it was so amazing because I'm there in the middle of the lake. And then all of a sudden, so I did it like three or four times. The beauty of that experience to me was that it could show me that I could take care of myself even in precarious mm -hmm. moments, even when I'm in the middle of nowhere and no one is around me that can help me. That's, uh, that, that's really the beauty of this. What is very important at that moment is that you need to figure out what's the most um, accurate spot for you. Because that's when when you are in discomfort, it's hard to focus. And so what I realize is what I I have like double vision, like I could see two sets of fingers. And so I had to like focus on just on one set at that moment, and figure figure out which set is the one that communicates comfort to me. And I figured out that's the first one right here. And so I figured out okay, I'm gonna look at that set, and then I'm just gonna notice what's it like for me to be doing this exercise of paddle boarding, stand up paddle boarding with ease and just mm. in the enjoyment of it. And so that's all it took. And I found this spot right there and it felt good there. And I just started doing it on my own. So what do you do at home? You could do the same thing. So when you are uh, at home, sometimes uh, the, the biggest question that I ask is, how do you do it so you won't get distracted because you, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on, right? So go to your room, go to some place that um, you can focus, that no one, you won't be interrupted for a moment. And I normally tell uh, people, just tell your family you're going to be doing your meditation. Because mm -hmm. they won't understand you if you tell them I'm going to go to the <laughs> spot. And they'll be like, what? <laughs> so... Uh, I tell people, just tell them you're going to go do your meditation. So go to that room and use your fingers if you don't have anything else. Uh, mm -hmm. I like using a pen as well. So you can use a pen. This is my pen. This is my star. Uh, so I, I can use a, a, a pen as well. Mm -hmm. Anything that will help you just stay on a spot. But the key is find the spot and notice your body. Notice your body. Okay, notice that sensation in your body. If you could, if you could use uh, bilateral sound, that would be really good too. Especially if you are in an environment where there might be a lot of distraction. The, the TV is on. The dogs are barking. There's a lot of commotion going on, uh, and you cannot uh, find a way of just staying focused. Uh, get yourself some uh, way of connecting to. Uh, some bilateral sound. You can find a link to bilateral sound for free on YouTube by going to YouTube and then typing David Grand or uh, Brain Spotting. And then you will see uh, uh, there's a link there uh, of bilateral sound and it's for free and you could just click on it. And it basically, bilateral sound is sounds that go from one ear to the other ear. And so it stimulates both hemispheres of our brain, but also goes to the same area where our visual is going to go, which is called the superior colliculi, uh, which is an area of the brain right here in the back of the brain. So we have yeah. two areas right here, and it's called the superior colliculi. And the top part is for visual, and the lower parts are for auditory and touch, which is, by the way, an area where pain travels through. Mm. So you communicate. You get right in there. Oh, you get right in the middle of it. So, that is very important and um, 
and yeah, if you could use the sound, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, Eric, my last question to you today is, what implications do you think that this that brain spotting for discomfort and pain has for the greater medical community. Where could I this think, go? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, my hope is that, uh, of course, David started this, David Grant. Uh, so I give him the credit because he has opened up the doors for us uh, to really explore. But to me, it's not about me. I think that my my the way I see it is I want to make sure that more clinicians learn this and that they could take it to the next level and that hopefully um, researchers out there will be able to explore it, experience it, and, and uh, verify and see what all the ways that are going to even more efficient than the ones that, are, that I'm doing, that we're practicing today, that could be explored. Because to me, we're only we know less of what we don't know. And, and I think that's the key. It's like, I, don't, I really don't know what else is out there. And so to me, it's like discovering America, right? But we just discovered a little island. And we, don't, we think that that's America, but we haven't realized that it's, there's much more out there to look at. And so to me, it's, we're just venturing into this uh, world of the, of the neurons. I mean, just to think of it, as one quadrillion connections in the brain by these neurons. Uh, that's more stars than the Milky Way in our own galaxy. And they're all brilliant and they all know what to do. And that's the reason when I go into therapy uh, with someone, with one of my clients, I'm not worried because I know that that, that client's neurons, I'm gonna take care of it. My only job is how can I be quiet so I won't interrupt the process. And how can I stay present and stay there and just trust that, that wherever the client needs to go today, the neurons are already not doing the job for the client. And I, I don't need to do anything. I just right. need to just hold the space. And that's the only thing I'm doing with the, with the pointer. But that to me is fascinating because this is the the entrance of, of the world of the unknown as far as research and as far as where we're going to be heading out uh, in the medical field. And my hope that someday uh, this will be more mainstream and that uh, even ins insurance and everybody else will embrace it so that this could be just a piece of cake and that more people will explore it also on their own and be able to see the benefits of it on, on, at the, in their own homes yeah. and with their own families. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope that, um, you know, just thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. I hope that, you know, by starting to really project and put this out there that we do see, um, you know, these endless possibilities start to begin to be explored. And yeah, just see where it takes us. Eric, thank you so much for being with us. Um, yeah so grateful for you and for your um, for your knowledge and wisdom thank you thank you thank you and i hope uh, everybody has a wonderful holidays <laughs> yeah happy holidays everybody, happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>